Hey, I always like to start with something interesting. And this is a crazy story. Nintendo Switch, you know what that is. That's a little handheld gaming console. Well, there was this guy in Japan, and he's a YouTuber, and he set up a webcam on his fish tank. Now, using tracking software, he turned the fish tank into a remote control for his Nintendo Switch. Okay, there's like massive brain power going on here. So the Switch... That, so essentially, if a fish swam from one side to the other, it would register in any game. Hmm. So one day, the game crashed. But the controller kept registering the fish moving all around. So the fish managed, I don't know how it did this, managed to get into the Nintendo eShop and download a whole bunch of digital goods. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, get this. Talk about a phishing scam. Oh, that is really bad. I know. Hey, listen, if you're a new listener, we're so glad to have you with us. And if you join us all the time, welcome back. And we always love to get your feedback. And you can send us an email to podcasts at commando.com. And this is Kim Commando today. It's Friday's show. It's always different than Monday through Thursday. So be sure you subscribe or follow so you never miss an episode. And you can also watch us do the show on YouTube. If you're more of a visual type of person, head over to youtube.com slash Kim Commando. And joining me here on Friday's edition of Kim Commando today, of course, we have our amazing content queen, Ali Seligman. And Ali, what do you have for us today? I am going to tell you what I think about whether you should keep your appliances connected to the internet. And a really handy tip, if you are the person that loses your phone from time to time, how to find it even when it's dead. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have our magnificent millennial, our very own Internet Scout, Matthew Heffel. What's on tap for you? I'm going to talk about how ChatGPT is impacting schools and teachers, as well as the best tech for lovers. Ooh, Ooh. that's me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, we're going to start with the news. These are important tech developments to keep you in the know. And I want you both to listen to the story very, very closely. And tell me afterwards, if you had the money, would you actually do this? So there's a guy that's making headlines. His name is Brian Johnson, and he's 45 years old. When he was in his 30s, he had a company by the name of Braintree. It did credit card processing. And he sold it to eBay for $800 million wow. cash. Ooh, okay, no stock, just cash. Okay. So if you see a picture of Brian, I'll tell you, this guy is ripped. Honest <laughs> to God. I mean, it's like, you look at him, you're like, Okay, I don't know if that's a 12-pack. I think that's a 16-pack <laughs> right there. And I was looking at like, I'm thinking to myself, I have never seen anybody with that body in my bed ever in my entire <laughs> life, okay? He says he has the heart of a 37-year-old, the skin of a 28-year-old, and the lung capacity and fitness of an 18-year-old. I remember he's 45. Uh, what happens is he's put himself on a strict vegan diet. He only eats 1,977 calories per day. Very specific. Yes. Not 2,000, mm -mm. not 1,500, 1,977 calories a day. Uh, he has a daily exercise regimen, high intensity exercise three times a week. He goes to bed at the same time. He wakes every morning at 5 a.m., takes two dozen supplements, works out for an hour, then drinks green juice laced with creatine and collagen. He brushes and flosses his teeth while rinsing his body with tree, to, tree tea oil, tea tree oil, and an antioxidant gel. Now, before bedtime, he wears glasses that block the blue light for two full, two full hours. He monitors his vital signs. He has monthly medical procedures, mm. okay? Ultrasounds every month, MRIs every month, a colonoscopy every month. Oh. Ooh, every month? Yes. <laughs> hmm. And CBC blood tests every, every month. When he's sleeping, he's hooked up to a machine that counts the number of nighttime erections. He <laughs> takes his daily measurements of his weight, his body mass, uh, his body fat, his blood glucose levels, his heart rate variations. Uh, he has 30 doctors on staff. It costs him $2 million a year to live like this. <laughs> what? Okay. And he says he's doing this because he's 45. And remember, he's got the lung capacity of an 18 year old. Mm -hmm organs of a 37 year old because he's saying that he is biohacking his life and his body no mention of a girlfriend <laughs> a wife a husband of not. A partner, shocking no kids so we'll start with you matt 
No. No? no absolutely not. <laughs> no? That seems like more work than the benefit. I mean, you're, yeah, you might live to 110, but you spend all of your time making sure that you live to 110. What's the point? Exactly. What do you think, Al? You know, I was in on a lot of it. I was like, all right, all right, all right. He doesn't have to work, so he has all this free time. But I like cookies too much. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know, I was just thinking like, you know, somebody needs to take him out for like a beer and pizza. Mm -hmm. You know, right? just say, come on, buddy, loosen up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> you know, go go solve world hunger. Um, go give to charity. And I mean, seriously, I mean, all day he is focused on his body. I mean, every moment <sighs> is on his body. I mean, yeah, but think about this. I mean, we're all going to die at some point. It doesn't matter how much money you have. I mean, we're all going to hit that coffin, right? Mm -hmm. But what's the difference between death and taxes? What is the difference between death and taxes? Mm. Uh, Congress doesn't meet every year to make death worse. That's <laughs> All right. So I love chat GPT. Oh, my gosh, Matt. <laughs> but apparently teachers don't, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's causing some problems in classrooms. Uh, you know, it's taken the world by storm. And I know you've been talking a lot about how it's uh, impacting Google and other big tech companies because it's breaking them down, right? So Yes. Um, but it's not just impacting them, it is impacting schools. I mean, think about it. This technology can write you an entire essay in seconds with just a few prompts. And so I thought it was kind of interesting that some of these school districts across the country have already been blocking this on their servers. So the LA and New York and Seattle and Alabama, all those school districts have blocked the use of ChatGPT in their schools. Now, of course, kids can get around this because they can just use their phones. It's not like they can't use their <laughs> cell phones, right? Right. But another thing is that my family, as I mentioned before, is full of teachers for generations upon generations teachers. And my sister is actually a high school English teacher. So I was curious to see how this was impacting her. So I called her the other day and just asked her a few questions. So the first thing I asked her was, have you seen this happen before? Have you seen any kids using ChatGPT? Have you talked to them about this? And she said, I haven't seen it yet, but they did just start their final research paper of the year. Ooh. And so she's interested <laughs> to see how that kind of turns out. But she told me that nine out of 10 teachers all think that it's scary and they want to try to get rid of it. But my sister has a little bit of a different viewpoint. She said, it's inevitable. It doesn't really matter if we try to block it or ban it or do all this. Kids will use it. And it's not like the technology is going to go away. Right? It's, like, it's like using a calculator. Exactly. And she used that analogy too. She says, you know, back in the day, you couldn't use a calculator in your math class, but now it's required to have a calculator in your math class. So it's just a calculator, but for writing is how she described it, which I thought was really a good way to put it. Another thing that she said was that um, if they want to try to catch kids using it, because it is still cheating if you have an entire computer write your research paper for you. But what she's doing to try to combat is she's having all her students write their rough drafts on paper and deliver them to her so that she has to see them and she can see any changes between their rough and their final if they use chat GBT. So I think that's, that's a really smart. good thing. I don't think she's going to be popular with the kids. No, I don't <laughs> think so either. Happen. She They're also, all going to have hand cramps. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. She also said that um, if they have any suspicions that the person used chat GPT, they're going to ask them to write an additional two sentences into a paragraph and then match it to the paragraph and see if the writing style is the same so that they, they can kind of detect it. Well, you know, that's interesting. So we are on chat GPT. This is version 3.0. Mm -hmm. okay. So as far as like being able to decipher whether or not somebody's actually just going into chat GPT saying, I need 500 words about <laughs> nuclear physics, <laughs> you know, whatever it may be. Okay, so chat GPT 4.0 that's mm -hmm. coming out uh, probably next year is going to be able to say, all right, um, it's going to be so good that it's going to be like 50% of it you will be able to figure out that it's maybe plagiarized or something like that. Oh. Mm -hmm. Chat GPT 5.0, that's coming up in another year. They say that AI is going to be so phenomenal that it's going to have an individual response every time that somebody types in the same question that they'll make it different. Hmm. Wow. That's, that's amazing. I mean, tech companies do talk big sometimes and don't always deliver on that big talk. So we'll have to see exactly what happens. I don't know. This is a fundamental shift. That's true. I mean, I, I think in the, you know, when the internet first was developed by Al Gore, I mean, which we know he didn't. <laughs> of course, do, uh, a series of tubes. <laughs> yes, and uh, <laughs> the tubes, uh, that that was a fundamental shift. E-commerce, right? Another fundamental shift. Uh, this is just, this is where we are just moving the Titanic, like in a whole different direction. Because yeah. it's not just 
writing and getting questions. It's what kind of effect it's going to have on various industries. Yeah, too. coding, all that stuff. So exciting, really, to watch. All right, so Ali, we've had on every Tuesday, Opt Out Tuesday. And I've been getting a lot of email about saying, even I got one this morning, said, you know, Kim, your instructions don't work. Okay, what is going on? We know they don't work. And we've got a sneaking suspicion of why. So we've been talking about this series for months. If you're not aware of it, these people search sites online, they collect everything about you, right? Not just your phone number, not just your email address, where you live now, where you've lived in the past, um, basically everything about your life. So we show you how to take your information off those sites. Well, uh, those sites don't like that, right? They want to keep your information. <laughs> yes. And so mysteriously, the pages have changed to get this information off. The instructions have changed. The way to do this mm. has completely changed. So we are working on right now how to, we're updating all these stories with new instructions because they've changed them all. And I'll be on the radio with you probably next week, Kim, and we can talk about, you know, once we have them all updated, I want to go into a little more detail because this is uh, pretty sneaky stuff. And so watch out for that. Um, once we get them all updated, you're going to want to go in and make sure that you're off these sites before the instructions change again. These are all the people search sites. These yeah. are the ones yep. like Family Tree now. And how many different sites do, have we done for Opt Out Tuesday? Oh, we have done a ton. We have 37 Wow. So we have a lot of these sites. Um, we've been doing them week after week after week. So um, once we get all those updated, yeah, definitely go in and get yourself off of those if you haven't yet. And if you haven't actually actually looked at yourself on Family Tree now, oh my yeah. gosh, Oof. just go ahead and do it. Just go ahead and do it. And you'll be like, oh God, I can't believe all that's out there for free for the taking, right? Yes, absolutely. The other thing I want to talk about today are smart appliances. So do you two have smart appliances in your houses? Um, you know what? I do. And okay. sometimes I think they're smarter than me, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the smart well, refrigerator that you can see exactly what's in it before you go in and get, a, get an alert if the eggs are, uh, you know, if the eggs are getting bad mm. and, you know, eggs are now $9 a dozen. Yeah, so that's okay. Ugh. But anyway. Yeah. I saw this headline. This was on Ars Technica and it made me laugh. Appliance makers, sad that 50% of customers won't connect smart appliances. So I, I don't really feel too bad for them, but someone from LG told the Wall Street Journal fewer than half of its smart appliances actually stay connected to the internet once people get them home. And by the way, these smart appliances are like 80 to 90% of sales for companies Ooh, now. So wow. if you're gonna buy something new anytime soon, it's probably going to connect to the internet, be smart in some way. So why do these companies care? There are two answers. I will let you two guess. <laughs> data. Data. <laughs> yes, and? Uh, and data. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Close, money. Money. Oh, of money. Course, of oh yeah, there it is. Okay. And so here's what they say that we, the consumers, get. We get to provide manufacturers with data and insights about how we use our products. No, thank you. No, don't care. Uh, we allow companies to send over-the-air updates which fine, but like it, we're in that part of time where it's like, really, my washing machine, my refrigerator needs yeah. firmware updates. This is so <laughs> weird. Okay. Uh, and then here it is. Being connected lets them sell relevant replacement parts and subscription services. Yeah. Data, mm -hmm. data. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> exactly. So there are apps for all kinds of things, right? There, You get an app for your stove that helps you with recipes and I guess heats it up for you. Like you said, Kim, your fridge will tell you, hey, you need to buy this. LG said they saw higher sales of water filters when the fridges were tracking water volume because whoever remembers mm -hmm. to yeah. buy a water filter. I, I have to tell you, yeah. like my refrigerator, it says right on the top, replace filter. I'm like, yeah, well, whatever. Yeah. You know, okay. <laughs> Never gonna do Don't that. tell me what Never to do, do fridge. <laughs> so should you buy a smart appliance? Should you keep it connected to the internet? I'm going to say this one is really personal preference. It comes down to... Is it useful enough for you in your life? Do you care about it? Do you like those notifications from the fridge saying, hey, your eggs are going bad or being able to say, oh, am I out of milk? Maybe you do. And maybe that's helpful for you. But if you're the person that says, eh, not worth it for my privacy, there you go. Disconnect it from the internet. Again, up to you. I'm going to say uh, no internet appliances for me right now. Mm -hmm. I just... yeah. Well, you know, I went to see Ian last weekend, and yeah. he's my college student son. 
and I opened his refrigerator. And, <laughs> okay, okay. And inside there were two beers, uh, <laughs> one bottle of Chardonnay, and a taco. <laughs> <laughs> taco. I was going to get single. beer and, a, and hot sauce. Yeah. And I was sitting there, I'm thinking, you know what? I should take a picture of this. And, <laughs> and he's like, he looked at me, and I'm like, Ian, you have nothing to eat. He's like, I know, I've got nothing to eat. I'm like, okay, dude, go like Postmates something or Instacart. <laughs> I don't care. Hey, listen, coming up, we have the best apps to keep things spicy at home, in the bed, in the relationship. Ooh. Uh, we have genius ways to find your long-lost phones. And also, I have a story about exploding phones that you don't want to miss here on Kim Commando Today. Hey, welcome back to Kim Commando Today. It's your Friday edition, getting you ready for the weekend. And if you don't already get our newsletters, what are you waiting on? Just head over to commando.com slash subscribe. And that's where you can get our tips, our breaking news. We have tips for Android, Apple, Windows users, you name it. Commando.com slash subscribe. And by the way, we're never, ever going to sell, lease, distribute your email address to anybody. So you don't have to think that we're a spammer. Ooh, we're not one of those. So again, that's commando.com slash subscribe. All right, so I'm going to go first with one of these great tips that we'd like to pass along in this part of the podcast that will make a difference in your life. And I actually posted the video over on my Instagram account. See, an iPhone 4 was sitting on a kitchen counter. And normally the family of three kids, mom and dad, they would have like school books and papers all over the kitchen counter. But for some reason, the mom says, you know what, I cleaned all that off before she left the phone on the kitchen counter charging overnight. Well, she comes up in the morning and she goes down the kitchen. She's like, ooh, what's that smell? You know, that, you know, that distinct smell of plastic mm -hmm. burning. It's just, yeah. it's that nasty smell. We all know what it is. And then she looks on the kitchen counter and the iPhone has exploded. It was all over and it had burnt to a crisp. And then she went back and she looked on her Nest Cam footage and she saw that sure enough, there was a fire right there on the kitchen counter overnight oh. of the phone charging. Okay, so what was it? It was an iPhone 4 hmm, mm. that was released in, anybody care to guess the year? 17? <laughs> you, Allie? 14? I don't know. <laughs> uh, 2010. Oh. Yes. Oh. Yes, 2010. And so, uh, so if you have an iPhone 4, just keep in mind that you're on iOS 7.1. And right now, kids are on 16.3. Yeah. So, oh. uh, so it's time for you to retire that iPhone yeah. 4. It's time for you to get rid of it. Uh, now, keep in mind, you know, if you are prone to charging your phone in bed, that's probably a bad idea, too, because it doesn't give you time to get yourself together if it ever were to go on fire. Uh, so just choose a location far, far away from your pillow. And if you know someone with an iPhone 4 or somebody who charges their phone by their bedside, <laughs> what I'd like you to do is go to Instagram.com slash Kim Commando and just find the videos, just post it. Take a look at the video and then share it out because uh, we want to make sure that more people are safe. And then do one more thing. Uh, help them go buy a new phone. Yes. Say, you know what? <laughs> It's 23rd. I mean, it's 2023, dude. Come on. It's not no longer 2010. All right. So Matt is getting married. I am. And so tell us about these apps that you guys are using. Well, Valentine's Day is just around the corner. We only got a few more weeks. So, you know, if you're trying to create more communication or trying to create a stronger relationship with your partner, there's actually some tech that can really help you with that. And so I did a little bit of research and I came up with three really great things that you can do right now with your phone or with one Amazon product that you're going to, it'll really help you. So the first one's called Couply. It's a really Couply? pop. Couply, C-O-U-P-L-Y, oh, okay. Couply. And it's a really cute app. Um, it is free from the App Store. It's also in the Google Play Store. And basically what it is, is it gives you daily quizzes to each you and your partner. So you connect your two accounts and then it'll give you these quizzes that allow you to kind of get to know them better or see what their Aww. love language is or talk about your favorite memory with them. And so each day it'll give you these little quizzes. There's also a ton of bonus quizzes that uh, you can get with premium, which the premium is quite expensive. It's a little over $70 a year Ooh. for the premium. Ooh. I don't think you need the premium. The normal is <laughs> good enough. Um, it also has where you can put these little surveys in the bottom and then it will hide them from them from a certain amount of time and then you can show it up. There's also these tests you can do that are like, go do this outdoors together this many times a hmm. week and you can check off check boxes oh, and that thing. It's really cute. Does, does it have like questions like, 
Do you have to leave your underwear on the floor every <laughs> single morning? You know, I did see one in there that said, what's your biggest pet peeve? Okay. So. Can you put the toilet seat down <laughs> in the middle of the night? The toilet paper roll goes outwards, not inwards. Jeez. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All that right, one's wait. really cute. Okay. The next one's called a love box. If you haven't heard about this, it's a little tiny box you can buy off Amazon. It's kind of expensive. It's about $130. But what it does is it connects uh, to your Wi-Fi. And then wherever you are in the world, you can send little text messages or little memes to this little box. And it has a little heart on the front. And the heart will jiggle. And then you open up the box and it has a special message from your partner wherever they are. So this is great for people that... Maybe your husband's a salesman or the wife's a salesperson and they're out selling for a couple of weeks out of town, right? Well, they can send little love notes to this little box and it sits in the living room and the heart jiggles. You open it up, cute little messages. That one's really cute, especially people that in long distance relationships or people that are apart for long periods of time. And finally, this one's generic, but I use this one all the time. Find a game, any game. On, your, on the App Store or Google Play and both of you download it and play it together. Always have one of those things that you're both doing at the same time. You can share that experience. It could be Candy Crush. It could be Flappy Bird. It could be any of the generic <laughs> old games for the iPhone and just both play it and you'd be like, oh, I'm on level 179 on Candy Crush. It's like, oh, well, I'm on level 216. You got to catch up. I think having that kind of rapport and having something similar like that is really helpful. And the fact that you can just get it on your phone usually for free Helps a lot. I have to tell you, Barry and I tried that. Yeah. Okay. So we were playing uh, Uh Angry Birds. So we're like playing along, like, you know, weeks are going by. Yeah. And finally, like, he's just like way above me. Like, I'm like on like level 110 and he's like on 180. Okay. And this is the guy who told me when it was raining recently in California. He actually looked at me and goes, I said, what are you doing today? He goes, I'm having an old man day. And I said, what's an old man day? He goes, I'm playing ham radio and I'm watching Mayberry RFD. And I was like, okay. So I'm this is an old man day? <laughs> yes, I'm like an old man day. And so anyway, so then all of a sudden, I start getting notifications mm. on the Apple Plus shared mm-hmm. family <gasps> account. Dude's buying levels. He's buying things to go up. I'm like, go to my I'm like busted, busted. You are busted right here. Yes. <laughs> That's so, incredible. Oh, it didn't even hide his tracks. No, nope. I don't think he knew how. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah. it's an old man day, yeah. ham radio, and yeah. old movies, <laughs> black and white movies. All right, so your phone is lost, it's dead. How do you get it? Where do you find it? Oh my gosh, good question, right? Now, I'm telling you this because you can, in we'll say, most instances, find your phone if it's dead, but you have to set this stuff up ahead of time. Now, I'm not going to go through all the instructions because that's boring. You can find that over on commando.com. If you just search dead phone, all the instructions will come up. But if you have an iPhone, you're in luck. It's really easy. You do have to set up something ahead called send last location. This basically, if your phone's battery is about to die, it tells Apple, hey, this is where I am. And then if you need to locate it, you can. Um, Because we know you probably know this because you listen to our podcast. If your phone dies, it's not fully dead. Like even after it shuts down, there's a little bit of battery in there so that you can locate it. And so you can find your phone through Find My. Or if you have an Apple Watch, again, you can make your phone buzz anywhere it is, even if it's dead. Android people, my people, we are less lucky. Okay. <laughs> if you have a Samsung, you're in luck. There's an app called Find My Mobile in the Galaxy Store, and it works the same way. You can find a dead phone. If you have a Pixel or another Android like me, I guess we just have to try not to lose our phones and let them die. Yeah, or you know what? You can just say, you know, we are the smartest. We are the elite. We don't lose our phones. Never, never. So, therefore, we don't need that feature that you iPhone losers might need. You know, I've always wondered about this. So they came up with the iPod right? The iMac, the iPhone, but then they called it the Apple Watch. I mean, imagine if they called it the iWatch. I mean, that would have been, <laughs> that would have been really crazy. Hey, uh, who has the joke this week? I do. Uh, I forgot to ask you, how good? You know, I was thinking about this on my way over here. I think it's a 6.743 repeating. So <laughs> that's what I think Just it is. Going on and on and mm-hmm. on. So we have the joke at the end. Uh, Allie, you have a really weird way to make some money. Is it a weird way or I- is it just a great way? You know, I thought after the feet, I owed you a really good one. So oh, this I is mean, a great way to make money. Okay. You know, I got to tell you. So last week we talked about how you can take <laughs> pictures of your feet and you can make money by taking pictures of your feet. 
Okay. I uh-huh. have I have people like reaching out to me saying, I would love a picture of your, your big toe kid commando. I'm like, ooh, that's gross. We're not going to do that. Uh, Matt has what the internet's buzzing about. And I have what the heck, the headline of the week. You don't want to miss us. And so stay right where you are. Hey, welcome back to Kim Commando. Today, it's your Friday edition of the podcast, so make sure that you subscribe and follow so you never miss an episode. And just a few days left in our big giveaway, our $500 Amazon gift card giveaway. So if you have not already entered to win, do it now while you're thinking about it. Go to commando.com slash win. That's commando.com slash win. All right, so here's the headline that I saw the other day. Google Earth maybe has found Bigfoot. Oh, bum, bum, really? Bum. Bum. How long have we been looking for Bigfoot? Oh. 20 years. Forever, right? Forever. Okay. I mean, I remember I was over in Scotland and you know, they have this whole thing about, you know, find trying to find Nessie, the Loch Ness monster. Mm-hmm. And this guy's yeah. taking us around on a boat saying, Oh yes, I saw the Nessie. I'm like, you are so full of it, but that's okay. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. There's a log in the in the lake. Yeah. Uh, all right, so other than I known as Sasquatch, it's a massive furry creature. It looks like an ape. Right. We all see it, it's, but it's big, and it, but it walks like a human. So this past week, Google Earth satellite captured something pretty mysterious in a forest in Colorado. And it's a shadow figure that kind of looks like Sasquatch. And now all these Bigfoot believers everywhere, they're going to say, oh my gosh, it's our beloved monster. Oh, we found <laughs> it. Okay, let me tell you, I looked at the satellite image. It could be anything. It could be a tree. I mean, it could be... A really big hiker. Okay, it doesn't look like Sasquatch. Uh, so people online have checked out the images on the coordinates of the satellite image for many years, and they say this is the only time that that shadowy figure was there. Oh. So it must be Bigfoot. Mm-hmm. You know, Ooh. I always wondered if it would be easy to catch Bigfoot, and so I was really relieved when I my doctor told me that it wasn't a disease that I couldn't really get it. Mm, uh, I know. A long way to go for a drink of water. I get it. All right. So, Matt, tell yeah. us what the Internet's talking about. So this way, when we're, we're having conversations and Zoom calls, we can sound like we're really in the know. Yeah. This is an interesting one. Um, if you haven't heard, there is a battle going on in Congress right now um, between Congress and uh, Live Nation, who is the owner of Ticketmaster, right? And they're basically fighting that basically... Live Nation has become a monopoly because they bought Ticketmaster. And so Live Nation owns all of the venues across the country, all the major venues, and Ticketmaster sells all the tickets. And so they can upcharge whatever they want and control the ticket prices. And this all came to a head, if you remember, a few weeks ago or a few months ago when the Taylor Swift tickets went on sale and Ticketmaster just crashed immediately with all these people. So (laughs) a ton of people trying to get Taylor Swift tickets didn't get them, right? And so they were all upset. Well... Congressmen have been quoting Taylor Swift in their arguments against Ticketmaster, which I think is fascinating. <laughs> and compilations of those clips have gone viral on TikTok and Instagram and all those places. There's actually one that's really hilarious. Ticketmaster ought to look in the mirror and say, I'm the problem. It's me. So that's the gist of what's going on. It's old men and women quoting Taylor Swift, I'm the problem, it's me, in a really droll (laughs) voice. Oh, gosh. Dozens of them did this. And basically what people are saying is they're all doing this to try to get the attention, try to be funny, but they all tried to do the exact same joke during the exact same time. And so it kind (laughs) of hit flat, but it's still going viral, which I think is hilarious. Well, it's kind of like, you know, if you you say, if you have to say you're hip, you're not hip. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Cringe. Taylor Swift, although, you know, what an amazing success story. Yeah, she absolutely. Is. You know, she's, what is she worth? Like, Ian was telling me she's worth like, a, like $500 million or some crazy number like that. And has her like two Gulf streams and, and, uh, cause they were talking about how she has a big carbon footprint. Well, she's going from venue to venue mm-hmm. to venue to venue. Uh, but you know, there's one thing that you're never going to find on Taylor Swift. One thing, you know what that is? Her boyfriend's phone number. Never, <laughs> never, ever find her boyfriend's phone number. All right, coming up, we have a joke at the end that is kind of moderately funny. Yeah. Uh, it's it's not going to knock your socks off, but it's going to be like, LOL, yeah, 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 yeah. one of those. Uh, <laughs> and then Allie has a great way for you to make some money here in 2023, so stay right where you are. 
Hey, it's Kim Commando today. It's your Friday edition of our podcast. So make sure that you subscribe or follow because you never ever want to miss us because who else are going to be your favorite tech friends? Come on. And speaking of, make sure that you also follow us on social. Like maybe that's facebook.com slash Kim Commando, instagram.com slash Kim Commando, twitter.com slash Kim Commando. And I'm so pleased that I now have blue check marks everywhere. It only took me years and years and years to finally get that blue check mark. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, Allie. We all need to have some more money, all right? Oh, yeah. Because things are so crazy. You know, I bought a bag of cherries and on Instacart. I didn't realize how much it was. I was just saying, you know, like, oh, yeah, I need a bag of cherries and, you know, stuff. Bag of cherries, one pound oh, no. of cherries. How much do you think a pound of cherries was? Five bucks? Uh -huh. Eight dollars. Twenty-four dollars and ninety-nine what? cents. What? Are they made of gold? Exactly. <laughs> and so I'm looking at it and Barry's like, oh, here, I'll have a cherry. I said, you better like savor them. Yeah. Okay. I mean, don't be. That cherry costs a dollar. <laughs> that yes, single cherry. Exactly. Exactly. So speaking of money. Oof. Yeah. Like I said before, I thought after the feet uh, situation, I want to pass along a way that more of you <laughs> might actually want to take advantage of to make money. And not annoy yeah, us you with your requests either. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we will not send you pictures of our feet, no. but thank you for asking. <laughs> Matt, you actually told me about this site, yeah. and it is awesome. It's called InstaWork. So this is a way to find hourly gigs near you. Businesses post when they need somebody to cover a shift, and then you make your profile. You say, yeah, I like that job. I'll take it. And then you get paid through InstaWork. They cover the paperwork, the insurance, all that stuff. So it's actually pretty easy. There are all kinds of gigs on here. You can work for an event. You can do bartending or busing or serving uh, at restaurants if they need a cook or cleaning or serving. Uh, warehouse work, too, like merchandising and, you know, filling packages, other warehouse jobs. The pay typically ranges from minimum wage up to $25 an hour. Mm. Oh, that's that. great. That's good. Yeah. And they pay once a week by direct deposit. One caveat, though, they don't have jobs everywhere. They are in about 26 big cities. We will have a list over on commander.com so you can see every city they're in, uh, along with links to download the app, check out the website. And if you want to make a profile, go for it. It's to work. Yeah. Do they have like, I wonder if there's something like for national radio host. <laughs> <laughs> just three hours national. I just I need like three hours. That's all. I just need somebody to come in for three hours. That's all. She wants to have an old man day. Yeah. <laughs> yes. oh, <God>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, my office is right next to him. When he's doing the ham radio, so I, I actually, I will put Oof. it in and I will put my head into something. I can't believe <laughs> that you left a job making Hundreds of thousands of dollars a year where you spoke to 50,000 people every single day on the radio so that you could talk to like one guy in upstate New York <laughs> about his crops. I mean, it's <laughs> like his crops. I mean, like, what is that? <laughs> All right. So, Matt, save us. All right. Bring us to the finale of this podcast with a big, big smile on our face. All right. A woman brings her pet gerbil who's very sick into a vet. As she laid her pet on the table, the vet pulled out a stethoscope and started listening to the uh, gerbil's chest. After a moment or two, the vet shook his head sadly and said, I'm sorry, your gerbil has passed away. The oh. distressed woman said, oh, well, are you sure? And he said, yes, I'm sure your gerbil is dead, replied the vet. Oh, how can you be so sure? She protested. I mean, you haven't done any testing on him or anything. Maybe he's just in a coma or something. <laughs> the vet sighed, turned around and left the room. Uh, he returned a few minutes later with an old dog. As the gerbil looked out in, on in amazement, the dog stood on, on his hind legs, put on a pause on the examination table, and sniffed the gerbil from top to bottom. He then looked up at the vet and shook his head. The, pet, the, pet, uh, the vet patted the dog on the head and took it out of the room. A few minutes later, he returned with a cat. The cat jumped up on the table and also delicately sniffed the bird from head to foot. The cat sat back on his haunches, shook his head, and meowed softly and strolled out of the room. Mm -hmm. The vet looked at the woman and said, I'm sorry, but as I said, it's most definitely 100% dead. He turned to the computer terminal, hit a few keys, and produced a bill. He said, I'm sorry, it's not the right time, but here's the bill. She looks at the bill. She says, $150? Why is it $150 for crying out loud? The vet shrugged and said, I'm sorry, if you had just taken my word for it, the bill would have only been $20 for my fee, but you needed the lab report and a CAT scan, so now it's $150. <laughs> 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 okay, you know, 
know, it was a long joke. It, it took a lot to get there. I, it did, it did. <laughs> you know, and I, I, I've never been di- diagnosed with ADHD or any of those, but I'm sure I have it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And about yeah. halfway yeah. through, I'm like, okay, yeah, all right. What, You're like, what, oh, what, look what, at this what, light. What? Yes, oh, there it exactly. is. <laughs> I was like, oh, you know, you know what I did? I actually looked down to see what time it was. <laughs> <laughs> How long through. have I been listening to this joke? Has it been hours? <laughs> okay. Oh, my gosh. All right, so before we leave, uh, how about a to-do list? Ali, you go first. If you have an iPhone or a Samsung, go set it up so that if it's dead, you can find it. It's really handy. And if you're like me, you've got a Pixel or something else, um, go feel smug. Like yes, I be do. smug about yourself. Yeah. How about you, Matt? You know, it's that love time season. So download one of these apps. If you can find another one, let us know. Um, they're all over the place. There's a ton of them, but they, they're really helpful. They can really help you communicate better with your partner. And I would like everybody to watch that video on my Instagram account. It really is telling. It's very frightening. Instagram.com slash Kim Commando. And be sure that you tell three friends about Kim Commando Today is the podcast. And we don't even care if you like them. It doesn't yeah. matter. <laughs> just, you know, just tell them. Tell at least three people because knowledge is power. And as I say, everything now is a tech thing. And so thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. And just a quick reminder is that you can always send us your comments. Make them nice. And no feet feature. Feet. Picture requests, please, <laughs> over at podcast at commando.com.